Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Sushmita, and I welcome you to a brand new episode of the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. In this episode, we'll talk about the power of curiosity in the workplace, how it is related to employee health and well-being, how we can measure curiosity, and also about training our employees to be curious. Please help me to welcome my guest today, Team Ritzma, the co-founder and general manager of People Managing People, an online publication focused on building a better world of work. Welcome to the show, Team. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about our conversation today. Same here. And thank you so much for joining me today. Before we start with the uh, topic, uh, the power of curiosity in the workplace, it would be great if you can brief us about yourself and uh, uh, people managing people. Yeah, thanks for the, again for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, a little bit about myself. So, you know, if you look at my career, it is far from a straight line. It is a very squiggly line. And I've had an opportunity to take various positions throughout my career from sales, sales operations, tech support, quality assurance. Uh, I did a little bit of consulting in people and culture, mm. uh, spent some time as a director of people and culture, and now am the general manager at an uh, online publication called People Managing People. You know, at People Managing People, uh, it's, I just have an, ex- I, I love my job. It's just such an exciting opportunity to lead a team of passionate people um, who are, you know, really focused around how to build a better world of work. You know, that is our purpose at our publication. We focus, we focus around this by covering topics around the employee life cycle, including passion posts, um, how to guides, how to select the right software for your organization, um, focused around people, leadership and HR, as well as we have a podcast and an online community. So that's really what we were about from a publication perspective. And our goal is, is really to build a better world of work, but also to put the how into the what and the why of people leadership. And often we talk about what we need to do, why we need to do it, but the how is is hard, and that's where we spend a lot of our time focusing our publication around. Yeah. So when we initiated our conversation uh, regarding this podcast uh, recording, um, you suggested a topic about uh, curiosity in the workplace. So I would like to know how you guys are working to improve curiosity at the workplaces for your clients. Yeah, curiosity is. You know, for me, it's it's one of the integral things that make any team function. Um, at people managing people, you know, I could sit there and say and dictate where we need to go and people, you know, may or may not follow, but that's never been my style. I've always been a curious person. And, you know, I, I remember my mom saying that I used to ask too many questions and that's because I just wanted to figure out how things work, how things operate. And so that principle has always stuck with me and I believe it's one of my core values. And, and so the way I, I lead in the way we've developed people managing people is around this idea of curiosity. So an example of that, we, we did quarterly planning recently and we brought the whole team together, brainstormed ideas. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily have the best ideas. You know, often the team has the best ideas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we then consolidate those ideas and put it into an action plan so we can mm-hmm. execute on those. Mm-hmm. And so that's just an example of how we use curiosity to, to push our publication forward. Right. Especially in this VUCA world team, don't you think curiosity, mm-hmm. you know, they are, it is more you know, relatable to the work-based realities today. Oh, absolutely. I think we need to be more curious now than mm-hmm. ever. You mm-hmm. know, simply put, curiosity allows us to reduce and ambiguity, fear, and, uh, you know, us making up our own narrative. You know, how often do we fill in the gaps when we don't have the right amount of information? Right. So another example, right now, there's so much talk and there has been so much talk about returning to the office mm-hmm. or hybrid work or we staying remote. And, you know, I've heard companies still haven't communicated out what's happening and employees are getting anxious. They don't know. So so guess what happens? If we don't encourage curiosity and encourage people to ask questions, we just make up our own narrative and make up our own reality that might actually not be reality. So, 
you know, that's just one example on how even as organizations, we need to get curious about what is going on in, in our team's minds. What are they thinking? Um, and, you know, listeners might be asking, well, how do I, how do I know what my team is thinking? Well, it's simple. Ask. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You know, um, it's as simple as, you know, hey, what's keeping you up at night? You know, what about this organization? Um, do you have fears around right now? Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, I, I'd be hard pressed to to hear that if if we if we ask those questions, um, if we didn't get the right answers. I mean, again, we may think we have the right answers, but unless we start talking to our teams and asking our teams, that's where we get um, get the real insights. So it's definitely adding yeah. a lot of uh, value to the to organizations. These questions, this curiosity among the employees. Absolutely, mm -hmm. right? It's you know we have um, we have so many unique individuals in our organizations that add so much value, and you know organizations are constantly changing, mm -hmm. and so we have this opportunity to to get curious about, about our teams, about what's going on in their lives, about their ideas uh, on how to push organizations forward. Yeah, more or less, I think we all are curious, but the thing is some don't prefer to talk about it and some mm -hmm. of us just ask the question very freely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you know, as a podcast host, we, we, you know, we have to have that value of curiosity you know, for sure. Right. right. And uh, very importantly, curiosity is uh, uh, also related to uh, health and well-being of employees. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, you know I, I I don't think we can have one without the other. Mm -hmm. So as a people leader, you know if if someone on our team isn't performing, do we just simply reprimand them, or do we get curious about what's going on? Definitely the second one. And so if it's the second one, how do we go about doing that? You know, thinking about, you know, we, we know what we need to do. We, we know why we need to do it, but how do we actually do this? And it's just might be as simple as, you know, if, if let me back up. If we just ask the question, like the team's not performing or the project's not going well. Mm. If we just continue to say, why, why is this not going well? Why is it not on track? What's that immediate reaction we get? If I hear that tone of voice, if I hear that, why I, I don't know, I, I get a little defensive personally. And I don't think I'm the only one. And I know I'm generalizing there, but I don't think mm. I'm the only one. Mm. What if we reframe that as to what's going on? You know, what's keeping this uh, this project from completion? What's taking it off track? What can we do to get it back on track? You know, I think it's that simple reframe of of a question that will bring out conversation with people. Because you're right, there's some people who just don't want to ask the question, and there's and there's some like yourself who who will just ask. Mm. And so the people who aren't asking the questions, I think that's where we need to be spending some time and, and unpacking and understanding. Right. So a, 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 a simple story about, you know, health and well-being. So it's a, it's a personal story. And, you know, I was uh, a while ago, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I was working for an organization and I, I live with a chronic health condition called Crohn's disease. Okay. So, when I was working at this organization, um, it, my, my Crohn's disease came out of remission and it was playing havoc just on my well-being. Mm. And I knew I needed to tell my boss. I, need, I needed to tell my leader that I wasn't performing at 100% and nor could I perform at 100%. And yeah, it was, I was nervous. I was a little, little afraid about, uh, about the reaction, but mm. Mm. he led with empathy and curiosity. And what I mean by that is... You know, he asked, what can I do to support you? And this is the CEO of a company. What can I do? The next day he called me and he had said, hey, I didn't know anything about Crohn's disease. So I spent uh, the evening researching what it is and let's come up with a plan. Mm. And, and so we worked together. That is true curiosity, authentic curiosity in, in action, in my, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. So Tim, how exactly can we measure curiosity in the workplace is it like possible because uh, as we have already discussed that there are some people who are like very uh, comfortable in telling how they feel and how what they are curious about but at the same time there are people who don't feel to open up yeah and and i would say it's i would ask the question is is that right or is that wrong 
You know, there's we're, we're all wired differently. We're all different people. We all uh, think differently. You know, some people can go into a meeting, a brainstorm me- meeting, mm. and be able to ask a lot of questions, mm. process really quickly, mm. and and drive to a conclusion. And some people aren't aren't able to to process that way. Right. I'm one of those people. I need to go away. I need to think about something, and then I'll come back. Mm. So as we design our organizations and our teams, you know, we need to be cognizant that we're not all the same. We're not all wired the same. We don't all think the same. We don't all react the same. Mm. So are we encouraging the behavior of go away and think about something? Or do we just put everybody in a room and say, I need your best ideas now. Mm. Go. So simply taking an understanding as, again, as people leaders, Mm. once we know, and if we know that there are differences in, in our team members, uh, it allows us to, to run our team meetings a little differently, or maybe we send out the agenda beforehand, which we should always do for meetings anyways, Mm. Um, sending out that agenda, but also asking for insights around key areas of, of business, sending that around ahead of the meeting so people can prepare. Mm. I think is is something that's really important. And then is there any way that we can train our employees to be curious? <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, you know, it's nothing new and nothing earth shattering or, you know, earth breaking or whatever we want to call it. But it's, it's normalizing asking questions. Mm. So an example that I like to use is um, my, my son, my eight year old son. You know, we'll be sitting around the dinner table and I'll be telling a story about work or something else that's interested me. And and he looks at me intently and says, Dad, tell me more. Mm. And he's eight and he will sit there and, and listen. And the art of active listening is something that I know he embodies, right? It, as leaders, are we constantly distracted by our devices, our notifications? Are we just focused on the headline and we just need quick reaction, just what's the problem, what's the solution without actually getting curious about what's causing the problem? Is it a symptom of something else? Mm. So another example is is a good friend of mine, Matthew Gould, and we talk about giving feedback. And one of the one of the ways to to give and receive feedback is to get curious about it. Tell me more. If I said, hey, again, this project is off off task, um, what's going on? As a leader, if that's where I ended, I probably did a disservice. I need to get curious and say, tell me more. So how can we train employees? Well, as simple as leading by example, as people leaders, we need we need to create that space. And yes, yeah, some people might say, oh, we don't have the time. We don't have the capacity. We just need to move forward and move quickly. Mm-hmm. But then think about what are we missing if we don't get curious? Um, if we're doing quarterly planning, is the same problems continuing to come up quarter after quarter or month after month? You know, we we talk about a problem, then we jump quickly to a solution, but we don't. Do we actually spend the time and unpack what's going on? I, I think of an example working at an organization where somebody came, a manager came in and said, you know, our people aren't engaged. And one reaction could have been, I don't believe you. They are engaged. Another reaction could have been, oh, tell me more about that. What's what's coming up for you? Why do you think that? You know, if we just jump to a conclusion or people are engaged, oh, we must implement a new software survey, gather feedback. But are people really disengaged or are they really engaged? So how do we get curious before we jump to a solution, to a problem that we haven't quite identified? So again, how do we train? Well, a few things. Right. I mentioned, you know, as leaders, uh, we need to normalize this conversation. Mm. Think back to the last team meeting that we had. Mm. Who did most of the talking? Mm. How many questions did you as a, as a people leader ask? And who in the team is also asking questions? So if it's, you know, I, I reflect back to a recent team meeting and I realized, man, I did most of the talking. So I need to also practice this. I need to, to switch my narrative. Second one is allowing space for questions. You know, it's that little awkward space, Mm. that awkward time. Mm. And and third, I would say it's choosing the words wisely. Hey, tell me more. In the the wise words of my eight-year-old son, tell me more. As well as 
instead of asking why, why something isn't going on, why aren't you speaking up? Hey, what's holding you back? Hey, how can we encourage more collaboration? Those are the three things that I would suggest we we take into our workplaces um, and watch that transformation happen. Yeah, so it's a lot about you know giving spaces to each other in uh, maybe in meetings and in group discussions. You know, making your meeting a safe space for an honest conversation. Yeah, yeah. Often, I mean, you know, reflecting and thinking about our conversation today, you know, often we we're, we're in this you know, hyperspeed, hyperspeed, you know, we're going fast. And so do we allow that, that space, allow that time? And it's so, so important. I think back to Mm -hmm. just in my university days and I studied business operations and we were trained in this technique, the five whys. Now I, you know, five whys is great, but also the five what's, you know, what's holding us back, what's holding people back from sharing. And is it that space like, like I was saying, it's we're, we're so uh, attuned to the highlights. You know, here's the headline. Mm. Here's what's going on. What's the solution? And mm. and then we leave a meeting. And, mm. and I know for myself, having that time to sit and reflect and think about it um, mm. is something that uh, if we're if you're missing that in our teams, if we don't normalize that, man, we're mm. missing so many, not just great ideas, but but great insights from people who can then drive that action. Right. Brilliant. That was a very nice conversation with you, team. Would you like to give any suggestions to the modern HR leaders who are listening to us today? Yeah, absolutely. I gave a a version of this talk a few years ago, and it was really around uh, authentic curiosity versus, uh, I call it self-serving curiosity. And I know those are two general terms, but for me, authentic curiosity is really the art of Removing distraction, paying attention to that individual or that team, and using that power of curiosity of, tell me more, let's unpack this. And what do you mean by that? Versus self-serving curiosity where you're you're driving uh, and striving for answers to questions to help you and, and only you. And when you think about this, I think about in our organizations, in our teams, we're made up of unique individuals. And as we talked about people who speak up in meetings and don't speak up in meetings, but there's also so many other factors that play into our team DNA. And that is our cultural influences, our upbringings, our faith, whatever that is, our, our core values. I mean, that that's a big one. Right. So if we make that assumption that we're all the same, um, we're making, I think, a, a mistake. So we need to get curious. Aaron Myers did a, a, wrote a book years ago. Uh, called the culture map. And so speaking of the cultural differences, mm. that is a great place to start as we uh, continue to expand globally, mm. work remote, hire from diverse places and organizations and different backgrounds. So what is the makeup of our organizations? And as, as a modern HR leader, I, like that's something that we we need to to have those conversations and, and normalize that um, behavior in our organizations. Brilliant. Thank you for your words, team. Um, and um, finally, I uh, would like to know how our listeners can reach out to you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd love to connect with with anyone on LinkedIn. So you can find me, Tim Reitzma, that's R-E-I-T-S-M-A, as well as send me an email, tim at peoplemanagingpeople.com. Uh, I'd love to connect and I'm naturally a curious person. And so I, I'm really curious who's listening. And, and so I'd, I'd love to hear from you. And so that's, uh, that's the best way to get a hold of us. Also, please check us out at peoplemanagingpeople.com and subscribe to our newsletter and join the community and, and send me a note there as well. Thank you so much, Tim, for joining me today. And thank you for all the uh, knowledge that you shared. We hope to meet you soon. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank, thank you, you again. Yeah, take care. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.